Welcome to Crafted Sweetly. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create this really cool effect with a votive light inside your book folding. This pattern looks simple enough. It's just a circle. You could do this as a cut and fold. We're going to make it a little more interesting. And for this, we're actually going to fold this at three different depths. So we'll have the circle kind of raised, this is going to be farther in, and then this is in between the two. And if you look at the pattern, it's super simple. It just has, the most it has is four cuts. Now, before doing that, however, what I did was this pattern is for 359 pages. My book is 399 pages. That's because I want to leave a border of 10 on each side of the book. I'm doing a 180 on the book, but I'm using my 180 marker to mark the book in three different places. Grab this one. I numbered these lines of what you could possibly mark as one against this one, two, three, four, and five. So for this one, I'm going to use the lines for two, three, and then five. Those are the three key lines that will be marked with this book. The number two is going to be the circle portion. The number three is the outer portion. And then the number five is going to be the inner circle. It'll make more sense as we go with the book. I do have another video that explains tips on using this 180 marker and a link on where you can purchase this if you're interested. But you always want to make sure you have this as perfectly 90 degrees. As you get farther down in the book, you might want to put some tiles underneath the pages. First 10 pages, it's the number three. When you hold uh, your scoring tool, and it's best to hold something, to use something like this, which is rounded, mark the first 10 pages on the three line in with my scoring tool. And these are all just going to be folded back. That's all I'm doing with these. Do all 10 pages. That was three, four. Okay, so that was the 10 that are not even part of the pattern. And the reason is I want to have a border around my circle. And I do just kind of fold all these back and then tuck them behind. It just makes it faster. So there you have the five. That's the 10 pages that are marked here. Two, four, six, seven, sorry. Okay, now we have 10 pages. What I want from this point on, what I want to mark is number two, number three, and number five. And I will show you why in a second. So I hold this tight to make sure that this is at 90 degrees. Mark my number two, three, and five. So you can mark like this a whole bunch of, you can mark the whole book because it's just going to be marked at this point. It's once you start folding that you may want to do things in stages like 20 pages at a time just don't forget which score lines you want okay and then once you have this then we want to start the pattern and even though i've done those 10 pages they are not included in the pattern i'm actually starting with number one and what i always like to mark is one is 13 here in the book. So if mom on page one here, and that's 13, I want to add 12 to this number. So I always mark plus 12, and then I know what page number I'm on. So I know that if I'm on page 31 on the pattern, I better be on page 33 in the book. But that way, you don't lose track of where you are in case you forget to mark off a page as you're working along. Once you've done those, then we fold to the first line here, both of these pages. Okay, and then we're going to mark. Now what I'm going to do is this, this is the, the circle part. This is the part that I want to be up to the first, to be sticking out. This part is gonna go up to the same 
point of where these folds are. And then the inside circle is gonna go to the next one. So here's what I mean. This first cut is gonna go up to the second score line. Okay, so this, I cut it, but it's gonna go up to here because I want this to be here. And then this stays as is, okay? Because that's part of the circle. I want this to be sticking out. It's an Audi in that sense. So that's all that happens with this page. So we didn't use the third score line, but I marked it just so that when I get to the point where I need it, it's already there. This goes back. Okay, and I'm just forming the circle. And at this point, it's gonna be this until you get to the measurements where we're starting to create the inner circle. Now I completed these pages and I'm starting off with this page, which means right in between here is the inside part of the circle. So starting with this page, 19, and if I double check my pages, 19 plus 12 is 31, I'm on the correct page. So that's how I always check my pages to make sure I haven't missed anything. Starting with this, I will need all three score lines. Fold it again, just the edge. And you can do both of them at the same time. You can do about 15 or so, 20 pages at a time. After that, it gets a little too bulky. All right, so we'll measure now. We're on page 31 and I've got I have my four markings on here. And this is part of the circle that's forming. And depending on the book, it might end up looking more oval. In the book, depends on how it opens up, but either way it works. This is the center portion, which I need farther in. Turn it just a little bit so I can get a little more light and see where my score line is. Now this part is gonna get cut here which would be for this, but I actually need it to the, this is to the second score line. But for the inner part of the circle, I wanna fold it farther in. So I'm gonna go to the third score line. This is the second part of it to fold in, and this is just going to the second. This goes in because that's the outside part. That's the outside part of the, the circle. And then this goes, down, which is the same as before. Now this, instead of it going just to here, we're gonna fold to the third line. So now you have, in the book, you have three different depths. You've got the 180 here. I mean, they're all 180s, but you've got the first one, which is the circle sticking out. Then this is the outside and this is the inside. Okay, now that's how far I've gotten, which is about right about the halfway point for the book. And then if you'll notice this tab, because there's nothing holding it back, it's kind of sticking out. So what I will do is for that, I will add just a little bit of glue to it and really any glue will work. Okay, and then, so that's the halfway point. And now you can see that this is a much nicer and cleaner ending here versus kind of sticking out. Okay, so I'll continue off camera, finishing these pages. And I finished the book and I actually started on the next step and realized I hadn't shown you how the project looks. So there is just the circle. Now, depending on how you open it, it's gonna be more of a circle than if it's slightly closed. So it's actually the design on my pattern is more like an oval because I'm gonna have this closed. Now you could have it more open so that it's more of a, circle if you'd like is I started cutting out some more notches and the reason I'm doing that is I plan on adding this LED votive light on the bottom of this design but as it stands right now with the book if you look at it it's slightly it's sticking out slightly more than what I have as far as depth so I'm cutting out a little notch here so that this can be set in a little farther and for that, I'm just cutting, I kind of marked it with the pencil where it is and cutting out little notches like this. And that's just so that I can add this in here. And I cut it, cut these out. I'm gonna cut the rest of them and then cut the edge out so that I can set this in. So I cut out the notch here and now this rests 
this is a little farther in and it's not going to interfere with the rest of my project. So I'll set these aside for now. And what I did was I cut out this using a Cricut machine. I don't have a die that's large enough to do this. So I had to create this file in Cricut Design Space. And I'll have a link to this file in the description box below if you end up making this pattern and have a need for these ovals. They're already done. This first oval is going to get glued onto the book. And what I did was I measured the height and the width and then that's how I created this in Design Space. But then I also want to be able to close this because I'm going to add some design to it. So I'll set the book aside and I also cut out an acetate that's the same dimension as these ovals. And this I'm going to glue down here. And for this I will use art glitter glue to glue it on. It dries clear. All right, and then I did a score line right there so that this stays closed when I'm done with it. Now what I want to do is for this front panel, this will eventually get glued onto here, but I wanted to make add some interest to it. With this pattern, if you don't do this and don't want to add the light to it, you could fill this whole part in with flowers. I think that would be really pretty as well. All right, so for this, what I want to do is I took a napkin and I've done a few different projects with napkins. You can check those videos out as well. And I have a link to the right above for it. But I have this napkin with butterflies on it. And I'm going to put this through the Xyron sticker maker before cutting these out. These are, have, all have glue on the back of them. And I'm going to fussy cut all these out. Okay, and then I do the same thing with all of them. Now it was easier to apply the sticker to the back and then cut around versus cutting out the butterfly and then trying to add sticker to it. And I'm just going to apply these to this acetate. Since the votive is down here, I want to kind of slightly cover it. So I'll do the largest butterfly at the bottom. And you can use some pick just to get the edge slightly lifted. And once you have that, then it's a little easier to peel the rest of the sticker off. And we're just taking the backing off of this. And for these napkins, if you haven't worked with them, they're actually three plies. And then once you have it down, you can just use your finger to work out any creases, bubbles. I've added a few of the butterflies directly onto this front cover. And then I wanted to create a couple of additional butterflies that have, that are dimensional as opposed to directly glued on here. I cut out from the napkin the butterflies the same way and then I'm applying this to cardstock instead of directly to the plastic. And then once I've cut this out, then I will bend it a little bit so that it's not flat anymore. And then it gets glued on. This portion is best if you can hold this book in an exact position. So I'm using this little basket to hold it in the position that I want this to make sure that it doesn't shift. And then because I want to glue this on and I don't want it to shift while it's drying. So once I have it in the position, there we go. So that's the where I want this open. I'm going to put double sided tape on here. Okay, so now I have my little window with this, the double sided on this side. Before putting this onto the front of it, I will apply a little bit of art glitter glue to this, to the tip of these pages. It will help make sure that it stays secure. Okay, and now this goes on. All right, and then the next step is this obviously is gonna go in here and then we just add, I'm just gonna add these butterflies on here. To add these little butterflies, the additional butterflies, I'm gonna use these glue dots on here and it's just a tiny, tiny drop. And the, the, by adding these, everything is not directly on the plastic. Now for this next part, once I stand the book up, this will actually open. So I want to make sure that this stays closed. I'm going to add this little button. It's just actually a button. And I'm going to glue this with art glitter glue. 
and place it right in the middle here okay and then that's gonna take a minute to for it to dry enough but then on the inside i want to be able to kind of tie a little string to it so this i'm gonna glue right here in line with it so this i'm gonna add it just the double-sided tape and i want it to be right in line and i'm covering this so it looks like there's white here but i'm actually gonna put just another little tiny tab of black cardstock right on top of it so you kind of improvise and see what works best for a closure part but once i have this i can wrap it around a couple times to it and then it's not gonna go anywhere okay so that should be pretty pretty tight on there i'm gonna stand this up for a second and we can put this in here and then once i have it in then i can just take this and wrap it around a few times and then it doesn't open anymore so that i think is pretty cool when you're ready to turn this off you just undo this and then the little window opens and we turn this off so even when the light is not on it still makes a beautiful display i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please comment below i would love to see if you create this project and what you come up with Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next project.